In this video, I'll show you the whole tone scale guitar shapes along the fretboard. I'll tell you why the whole tone scale exists and how to use it on the guitar. This is part of my scale mapping lesson series where I do a separate video for a bunch of different scale types on how to map them out and practice them and learn all the positions of them on the guitar. This video totally stands on its own, but if you want to work on any other scale type, check out the playlist of all of those scale mapping lessons and you can work on any other scale type. We're gonna cover four things. I'll tell you what the whole tone scale is I'll tell you what it's used for. I'll show you the physical shapes and scale forms of the whole tone scale on the fretboard and how to practice them to get them down. And lastly, where we will listen and play around with improvising with the whole tone scale over a dominant seventh chord, which is very commonly how it's used for improvisation. So very simply, the whole tone scale is a scale made of only whole tones. It's just if you start on C and you go up a whole tone, whole step, two frets, go up another two frets, another two frets, another whole step, another whole step, you get back to C eventually, and this breaks up the octave in six notes instead of seven notes. So this is the type of scale that we can be called a synthetic scale. It's not a diatonic scale. It's not a seven note scale. It's not related to a key or a tonal center. It's very kind of an odd symmetrical scale that just kind of sounds the exact same anywhere you play it. Uh, very strange sound. It's used very similarly uh, to the diminished scale, which I did a huge thorough tutorial on. So check out my diminished scale tutorial if you want to know more about these types of synthetic scales and how they're used in music. In short, the whole tone scale, just like the diminished scale, can be used to create an intentional lack of tonality to get away from hearing like there's a tonal center. And this is what composers in the kind of impressionistic era of composing in the early 20th century were doing. Uh, so you can use the scale to get a, a dreamy kind of effect. In fact, the dream sequence, the kind of cliche sound of a harp doing like a dream sequence sound is usually the whole tone scale, like in a cartoon or something like that. You can use this scale to also modulate or create tension and then resolve. And in improvisation and in jazz music, and for a lot of guitarists, it's primarily used to improvise or compose and play melodies over a dominant seven chord and specifically a dominant seven sharp five chord. So if you want to really map this scale out, here are the five scale form positions, the five scale shapes. Uh, that I practice to get it down on the guitar and to be able to play it anywhere off of any root and therefore be able to play it off of any dominant seventh chord that might come up in music. And when I'm mapping out any scale and working on it, I always use what I call the root to root method or the root to root exercise. That's where we just start on a root, we play up to the next root and we repeat or pause and repeat on that next root. We don't re repeat or pause anywhere else. So we're just hearing root to root all the time. And this allows us to really know where we are in any type of scale. With something like the whole tone scale, it's so symmetrical. It's so the exact same anywhere you land that uh, this at least helps us know uh, what root we're actually playing off of. So if we're playing off C dominant seven sharp five, we can have a better sense of that if we've done the root to root exercise. So let's go through all five of these scale form positions of the whole tone scale with the root to root exercise. I'll just demonstrate that for you. That's what I've been doing in this entire scale mapping lesson series. So we'll do that. And you can download these diagrams totally for free. I have a pack called the printable parent scales PDF pack that has a bunch of parent scales, the whole tone scale shapes. These exact shapes are in it. You can get that with the link in the top of the description. So if you want that as a resource to work on for yourself, please get that. Let's go through and demonstrate the root to root on all five of these shapes. I'm going to play through these examples kind of fast, but don't worry about playing them fast on your own. Take it nice and slow. I'll just do it uh, for the sake of the video, just so we can hear it um, as an overall sound and just get through the root to root method on all these shapes. Let's do it. thing you might notice is that several of these physical shapes are the exact same, but we're still practicing them in different positions uh, off of a different root each time because the, the 
scale is symmetrical. That's why these shapes end up being the same, but we're, we're treating the root in a different place with each of those scale forms. So as you get into it, and if you want to map this out, and if you're practicing it, you'll, you'll see what I mean by that. Now, this scale is perfect for playing over a dominant seventh chord with a sharp five. Dominant seventh chord with a sharp five has a root, it has a third, it has a sharp five, and a flat seven. And all four of those notes are inside of the whole tone scale. And if you add a nine to it, that's also in inside the whole tone scale. So dominant seven sharp five or dominant nine sharp five is very whole tone scale, kind of asking for the whole tone scale to be played over it. You can play other stuff over it as well, but it's just a great scale to, to do this over. So I'm gonna play this shape of C seven sharp five this chord shape and then just play around with the whole tone scale this um, third shape that was on the sheet that I demonstrated and we're gonna listen to how that sounds and just kind of noodle around with it and soak it in hear how nebulous it is here how open-ended it is there's no beginning there's no ending it's just the same everywhere you go it's this absolute ungrounded kind of sound it has no home base even though c is the root of our chord it still sounds like it doesn't have a home base that that dream sequence sound So if you want to, you know, maybe create a loop for yourself uh, or backing track or something or, or not, but noodle around with each of those scale forms, thinking of where the root is so you can at least track where the root is over a chord. Um, and then you be ready to try to implement that into improvising over chord progressions if you want to do it that way or just jam on kind of a dominant seventh jam and uh, play various types of scales that work over dominant seventh chord and throw in the whole tone scale to start to get the flavor of that down. Uh, I have a video about 23 different scales that work over dominant seventh chords where I demonstrate all of them. Whole tone scale is one of them. Check out that video if you're interested. Another way to work on this if you want to do it a little more in the context of a chord progression is to play a dominant seventh chord. Like if we play that same dominant seventh chord and then resolve to a chord that it leads to nicely. So C7 would lead nicely to um, F major 7 or F minor, but uh, C7 to F major 7. So you could play the whole tone scale off C and then resolve to F and maybe play F, the F major scale a little bit from there. So kind of going back and forth between two chord types using it, dominant seventh chord to major chord. It's a great way to work on this too. If you're interested in improvising over chord progressions, especially jazz chord progressions, then one of the best things you can do is improvise with chord tones and map out just improvising with chord tones and then later adding scales around that. That's why I have a free resource that is my chord tone arpeggio pack that has 12 different chord types, five positions of just the chord tones mapped out for all of those chords, which are all the chords we need to improvise with chord tones over any jazz chord progression. So that's totally for free as a PDF. You can get it with the link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. I highly recommend that you check out my diminished scale tutorial next. It's the diminished scale is a similar type of very odd, modern, nebulous, synthetic scale. Um, and I go way more into details, a very in-depth video for the diminished scale. And it's a really, really cool sound. So I'll put a link to that video in the description but also if you're watching on youtube i'll throw a link on the screen here that you can click and go straight to that video which i recommend watching next i post a new lesson video every single week next week's lesson is going to be on a modal ear training exercise that literally changed my life in terms of enhancing my overall musicianship skill level hope to see you there thanks so much for watching take care and happy practicing